So now that we know how to define our sets, how to describe them, um, we've got some special sets, special number sets, that we're going to use them regularly. So it's actually important for us to, to know who they are and to understand what they mean and which numbers are, are inside of them. So the first one which, is, uh, which we should remember is the natural sets, the, the natural numbers. So what is the set, of the, the set of natural numbers? Well, it's all numbers that you can count, usually. Count with your hands, count with your, 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 your fingers. So for example, let's say you're play, playing tennis, right? And you're throwing one serve, two serves, three services. You, you, don't, you don't do half of any of that, right? Also, let's say goals in a game. You score one goal, two goals, three goals. You don't. There, there's no such thing as half a goal. So the natural number set is denoted by this um, different letter n, and basically it's all numbers that we can count. So one, two, three, four, and so on. So we can write our sets like this and there's also a a way to visualize this Oops. you can think of this as a, a line in which all numbers are in it right so one two three four so if this was a line for example here would be let's put some some numbers so if this was zero this would be one two three and then it would continue and here negative one negative two so if we're talking about the natural numbers negative numbers would not be here um, positive numbers we would fill those points in so this basically means this point is there this point is there this point is there this point is there oh I forgot the zero here alright so all of those points are in the natural numbers in the set of natural numbers the second one is the set of the integer numbers so the integer numbers they are basically all the natural numbers but also their negatives so I would have 0 1 2 3 and so on just like oops, just like before and also I would have the negatives so negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 and so forth towards negative infinity as well it's it's important to notice that if we take the number of elements of set n it's actually infinite right if we take the number of elements on set z or a set or integer set um, it's also infinite it's uh, it's too many numbers to count we cannot count them um, if you remember here it's going from 0 to negative to, to infinity so there will be more numbers that we can count now we can also produce a line just like before so placing those numbers in the number line so, so just some of them so let's say take away 1, take away 2, 0, 1, 2, 3 so in this case, all of those would be filled in. All of those dots, they would have to be filled in. Whereas here, in the, when we were discussing about the natural set, the natural number set, those would be blank. They would not be filled in here. The negative numbers, they would not be filled in. There's another thing here. Um, this is going to keep going both ways. Now it's not only going towards the positive um, side of the number line, it's also going towards the negative side. So far so good. Now we also have a slight variation of our integer um, number set. We have this which is only the positive integers. So this would be um, basically everything which is here but only the positive ones and then you may ask okay what's the difference to the natural numbers well there's no zero here 
because zero is not positive. Zero is neither positive or negative. It's neither. So this is a slight variation. I could have something like this, and this would obviously be negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. This would be all positive integers. This would be all negative integers. Now, we're missing two sets. So this one is the rational numbers, the set of all rational numbers. So I will not describe them um, like this. Um, I'll s not with numbers. I'll describe them in a slightly different way. I will define them to be p over q, where p and q are um, integers. So basically it's a quotient of two integers. And if I was to place them on the number line, I would, well, I would be filling all the number line. It would be tough, wouldn't it? Because I would have all the numbers and any number that is in between here, which is can be written as a fraction, I would also have it. So the number of elements on my set would also be infinite. And in, in fact, in all of them, it's going to be infinite. And our final set is the real numbers. So the real numbers is basically all numbers that it can be placed on the number line. So in this case, um, well, it's the whole number line. It's just the number line <laughs> going both sides. So one, two, three, zero, negative one, because all numbers except some, which we're going to see in the future, like roots of negative numbers, there are some limitations, but despite that, everything but that um, is going to be a real number. So those are the sets, the main sets, the special number sets that we're going to, to deal with. So the natural number set, the integer number set, the rational numbers, and the real numbers. So natural, na um, natu uh, natural numbers, the numbers that you can count, so countable usually, you can count with your fingers, one, two, three, one book, two books, one sheep, two sheep, um, anyway, one game, two games, you don't have half game, or shouldn't. Now integers, um, you can think of money, for example, when you have, you owe someone a one dollar, um, you could think of this as an integer, even though you would ha you wouldn't have any fractions here. You wouldn't have any decimals. This, as the name implies, integer. It's an integer. There's nothing broken. There's no decimal point. Whenever you see a positive or negative sign, it means you are neglecting whatever is not positive or whatever is not negative. So here only the positive ones. Here only the negative ones. So we're basically, in this case, since we're talking about the integer numbers, so it's everything which is um, not negative, and we also ex exclude zero in both of them. Now, the third set, again, rational numbers, any number that can be written as a fraction. So a few examples, um, 0 0.1. Well, 0 0.1 doesn't look like a fraction, but you can write it as 1 over 10. So it is a rational number, right? Um, another one, for example, let's say, what about root of four? Well, root of four can be simplified as two. So it's actually a natural number. But the point is two can be also, two can be written as two over one. So all natural numbers are in fact rational numbers. So they are actually inside of each other. We've got the natural numbers, and then the integer numbers contain them. Then 
the integer number set is actually a subset of the rational numbers and overlapping them all and including them all we've got the real numbers which is basically all of them and the numbers that cannot be written as a fraction so you might ask me okay what's well what number cannot be written as a fraction well pi if you try to to work out pi it would never end 3.1415 and it's actually that there are, there are people who are on the Guinness World Records because they memorize numbers of pi we also have roots so any third that we cannot simplify right any root that we cannot simplify so it's a third um, this is an endless number so we cannot write it as a fraction if we try to write root of 2 as a fraction we are going to simplify it we will not have the actual third root of 2 whenever we write it down whenever we put the number in the calculator and we get some number it's an approximate number it's not the actual number that we had in the beginning so it's um, in this case root of 2 any third so any roots that we cannot simplify would also be a real number so here we have a few problems it's basically true or false um, however we have to remember both our special number sets and um, our notation our set notation so let's see true or false give reasons for your answer so first one two is a member of the integer numbers now remember that you can always pause and solve the problems yourself and come back to the answers later now two um, is two a member of the integer number set well in fact it is right if you remember our integer number set it goes from negative infinity towards positive positive infinity so a negative 3 negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 3 and then it goes up again so here it's going towards negative infinity so it comes all the way from imagine the largest number that you can conceive which is a an integer right if, which is a whole number um, that would be negative infinity even actually negative infinity would be smaller than that because it's uh, an inconceivable small number but anyway so we're coming from negative infinity so we get all the negatives up to negative 3 negative 1 negative uh, so, so negative 1 0 and then 1 2 3 and then we go up all the way towards positive infinity so well 2 is here right so 2 is indeed a member of the integer set now you ha you also have to remember that um, the natural number set is a subset of the integer numbers in this case a proper subset because it's not the same set likewise the integer set will be a subset of the rational uh, numbers and the rational numbers will be a subset of the real numbers this is a bit obvious but it's just like I showed you before you have the natural numbers and then integer numbers include all of them and then you have the rational numbers which um, get all of them as well and then overlapping all of them including all of them and a bit more the real numbers so first one true second one two and a half is a member of the re of, of the rational numbers so rational numbers can be written as a fraction so we have this number here well since two um, two and a half right can be written as this is two over one right and, and two and a half so this is two whole numbers and a half so that's five over two which is well it's p over q isn't it it's a quotient of two numbers two real numbers so it is indeed a uh, rational number so this is actually true now five is not a member of the rational numbers well five well for five to be a member to be an element of the rational numbers i will need to be able to write this as a fraction which in fact i can 5 is the same thing as 5 over 1 
which is indeed a rational number. So this is false. Now, pi is a rational number. So pi is an endless number. It will never end. If you put the numbers in your calculator, it's going to give you 3.14, 15, and so on. However, it will give you an approximate value. It will truncate somewhere. It will stop calculating the value somewhere. So you will only get some approximate value. It will not get the actual value. So you cannot write a number which does not end as a fraction. So this is false. And last but not least, we've got negative 2 is not a member of the real numbers. Well, negative 2. Well, negative 2 is an integer. All the integers are real numbers, so that's false. Um, also, you can draw, you can, you can put, you can place negative 2 in the number line. So if you draw a number line, you'll have negative 2 here somewhere. You'll have 0, whatever, right? But you have negative 2 here somewhere. And, well, any number that you can place in the number line is a real number. Therefore, this is also false. All right, so this is a very interesting case, and we've got a different kind of fraction here, a possible different kind of possible fraction. Because take a look, this is a number that is endless. It doesn't end. However, there is some kind of logic to its pattern. So we have this recurring number, which is 0 0.36, and 36 repeats forever. And basically, it's asking us to show that it's a rational number. So if we just look at this number which never ends, we could perhaps assume that this is not a rational number because it doesn't end. However, because it is repeating, it will be a rational number. So this is the only exception that we have to recurring numbers. It's when they have some kind of pattern, when they, well, when they are recurring numbers, right? So when they, they have some kind of um, that you, you can you can observe some kind of repetition in this case 36 36 36 all right so first of all let's assume then that 0 0.36 recurrent is well as the question is telling us 0 0.36 36 36 and keeps going right now um, if I multiply both sides by 100 okay so let's say that this is x and I'm going to multiply x by 100 so 100 x so I'm going to multiply this side so I would have 36 point three six three six three six forever right now I can decompose this number 36.363636 as um, simply 36 plus 0 0.363636 forever, right? And this is actually my x. This is my original x. So I can I, I can well just copy this 100x equals and then let's put what we have found here 36 plus x now if I get if I try to um, work out all the numbers here so I'm going to get x to the left hand side of the equation it will subtract so I'll have 99 x equals 36 and then I can write x as a fraction so it would be 36 over 99 and well since what I, what I have on top and below is divisible by 3 right I can simplify this actually by 3 twice right so I can divide by 9 on top and below so I get 4 elevenths so 4 over 11 therefore this number 0 0.36 can be written as 4 over 11 and therefore is a rational number.